Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we are in the season of Christmas. Praise God. Now, when we say Christmas, we as God's children, what we understand as Christmas is celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, beyond the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, we also celebrate the person of Jesus. That's why I'm taking this period to share with you on who is Jesus. Now, before we go into the broadcast, remember the Lord commanded us to do something. So are you ready to call in your daily bread? Say with me, say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. And it's coming to me now. It's overflowing in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we honor you for today's broadcast. Thank you for your gift of your son, Jesus. Thank you for all he did while he was on earth. And today we can boldly approach you because of him. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. And I declare today every body is lifted. Every yoke is destroyed right now because of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to continue on the person of Jesus this week. Now, I've shared a lot about um, who Jesus is, who, what his ministry is. And the last week I was talking to you about his, his taking up the high priest, the taking up the priesthood ministry of Melchizedek according to prophecy. Now, uh, understanding this, that Jesus... Um, when he was on earth, his ministry was quite limited. His ministry was limited. And I kept sounding this thing to you concerning, and if you, don't, if you miss this point, you miss everything. And what is it? The purpose of Jesus from the beginning was never not to die, sorry. His purpose was not to die. Now, he had to die and, and for, because he had to die, he had to be born into this world as a human being. So he, he took up our sins. And because of that, he had to pay the penalty for sin, which was death. And that's why he died. But he came to die in order to fulfill his real ministry. If you don't get this about the life of Jesus, you will really not understand what we are doing. You will not even understand what God is doing in our lives. A lot of believers don't even know. I've seen, I've seen people believe in Jesus for many years and then they get to that point in their lives that they don't even know what to hold on to anymore. They are just there. I mean, okay, we've, we've seen things, we've done miracles. They, they just begin to talk about what they've done for the Lord. But you don't realize something. It's more about what he is doing in you. What he is doing in you. And there is this mistake we make as believers. We think we are working for God. So we wake up one day and say, I've been working for God for the past 40 years, man. I think it's time for me to just take a rest. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, like something like that. Since I've been on this thing for a long time, I've preached here, I've preached there, I've preached there, I've preached there. I've, I've bought the testimony of Jesus everywhere. Beyond what you are doing for him, you've got to pay attention to what he is doing in you. What is he doing in you? He didn't just call us to believe in him and then start going around preaching, 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 preaching. Yes, we preach our testimony. We talk about him everywhere we go and everywhere he will send us to. But above all, remember, remember. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. This is very important because, see, I'll tell you something. If you don't understand this, you will not even understand what Christian persecution is all about. We have a great, we have, we have too many misconceptions about persecution. We think it's okay to die for the gospel. But let me tell you something. That in itself is a big contradiction. The gospel is a gospel of life. 
So the gospel brings life to us that we may live. And here we are, custodians of the gospel, saying we are ready to die because of the gospel. That's a contradiction. Think about it. Think about it. Now, something brought forth that mindset, but greatly misunderstood. And, and many times we allow emotions to rule us and not the truth. Emotions how? Okay, I'm ready to die for Jesus. Now, I can say that meaning I'm ready to put my life on the line for Jesus. But then, in my mind, I understand the reason I'm bold enough to put my life on the line is because no man can take my life. Now, that is where we miss it. Jesus said, this one thing I have received from my father, he gave me the power to lay down my life and he gave me the power to take it up again. Don't forget the taking up parts. So he knew he would lay down his life, yet he knew he would not lose his life. But today we go, even if I die, I want to be sure I die believing in Jesus. And, and I'm talking about persecution now. If someone puts a gun to your head and say, denounce Jesus, he say, I'd rather die than denounce Jesus. It's a big contradiction. The Jesus you are holding on to is the author of life, the giver of life. Nobody took his life from him. Why should they take your life from you? No, why should they take your life from you? The author of your salvation. No man took his life. And guess what? Guess what? Oh, Sheba, I can't tell you. You know, Hebrews tells us that he tasted death for every man. He had taken up your place in death. What business do you have with death? And then, you try to think it's balancing it up to say that even when we die, at least we know we have a hope that uh, we, will we will be raised from the dead. When? And when, when Jesus comes. I've told you that before and I'll tell you that again. Everybody that dies today, no one dies in victory. No one dies in victory. victory dying has no victory in it when you die you were overcome by a spirit and that spirit is called death and it's an enemy of god listen we are waging war day by day 24 hours with this spirit of death and sometimes it comes with deception and sometimes it comes with an outright onslaught and and sometimes you begin to you begin to negotiate in your mind without knowing you see and when i want to die I think I want to die climbing my bed and folding my legs and, and just putting down my head and sleeping just like David did. Hey, hey, you were still captured by the spirit of death. The moment you close your eyes here, I don't believe that thing, you know, and, and you, see, you see, if the truth is not made known, uh, we will keep living a lie. Our experiences will be wrong. So you, we, we tell, we say this, you know, and when someone dies, you say, oh, he's gone to be with the Lord. No, he didn't go to be with the Lord because the Lord is not dead. The Lord is not living in the region of the dead. If they've gone to be with the Lord, then the scripture will be wrong to say on the day of the rapture, the dead in Christ will rise first. So what do you think? Think about it. So are they with the Lord? Then the day of the rapture comes and then the, the Lord says, oh yeah, all, all of you guys, all right, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back to your bodies. And then I'll come and raise you up. You think that's what it is? Come on now. Come on now. If that's what it is, then there's a big question about people like Elijah. 
People like Moses. People like Enoch. And Jesus himself, who the disciples saw going up until they didn't see him anymore. But those that have died, you can say, oh, this is where he was buried. This is where he was buried. This is where you get, get to that gravestone and then you say, oh, this great man of God or this great man that lived on the earth and here he was buried. But you can't point out to where Elijah was buried. And it's not because the erosion or archaeology have um, scattered it. No, 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 no. You can find it. You can find where Enoch was buried. You can find where Moses was buried. So what's the difference between them and you? That's why on the Mount of Transfiguration, Abraham did not show up. It was Moses and Elijah. Now think about it. The two of them must have come from the same place. Praise God. And that's to tell you that Moses didn't die. Oh, but the Bible say Moses went up the mountain and died and God buried him. Who saw him die? No one found his burying place. So where did God bury him? God told him go up the mountain the same way he told Elijah to go somewhere. But for Elijah, someone was bold enough to follow him. For Moses, because he went up the mountain and these guys were too afraid to follow, no one saw when the chariot came to carry him. So they assumed he must have been, he must have died somewhere in that mountain and God, maybe God buried him. Because, because they, they, maybe they scout that whole area looking for his body. Because if someone falls down to die, you'll find his body. It doesn't matter how many years. You remember, you remember the same thing with Elijah. Even when the, the chariots came to pick him, those sons of the prophet still came to Elijah and said, look, let us send men to search around the mountains. Possibly he was dropped there. Maybe we'll find his body dead somewhere. And they actually did and found nothing. What am I saying to you today? Jesus came to give us life. And it is time for the church to begin to meditate on this truth. Where is the life that Jesus has brought for us? Where is the life that Jesus has brought for us? And he couldn't give us that life as long as he was here on the earth. He couldn't give us that life. Because for him to give us that life, he has to go back to his original self where he will function in his true ministry. He came as Melchizedek and brought the blessing upon Abraham's life. He ministered the blessing to Abraham. And that's what brought Ole Brady Shebran and Tarika Rose. It was after the meeting with Melchizedek that man, Allah Shayanda, man can begin to prosper supernaturally. So Melchizedek taught Abraham, hey, don't put your trust in these earthly things. Don't put your trust in your labor. Believe me and I'll bless you. Abraham just came from a warfare and he got some goods and he says don't take anything from it oh, oh, oh. Right. They, they are the spoils of war no don't take anything from it I don't want you to take anything from these things give them back just take out the tithe and he told him what to do with the tithe and he says go give it to him intact and Abraham went and as though to really tempt him, the king of Sodom now said, No, Abraham, you've done so well. Just give us our wife and children. Abraham said, You see, that's the right thing to do. But he said, No, sir. I have sworn before the Lord. He said, I have lifted up my hands before the Lord Most High, the possessor of heaven, and then I will take not even a shoelace from you. Now, he ministered as Melchizedek the blessing to Abraham's life. And Jesus had to go back into that same ministry of Melchizedek in order to minister life to us, brothers and sisters. Jesus is in that ministry now. 
it is time for God's children to begin to manifest that life, the very life that Jesus spoke about. We are in that season, we are in that time, and we are taking it up and leaving it to his glory. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up for today. Listen, this week is going to be amazing. As a round of the year, I'm going to share this truth. It will propel you when you're going for your retreat, preparing for the new year. Let these things propel your thoughts and your prayers. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you today. Bye-bye.